I'm going to be doing a SIBO vacuum for you today, if Daisy will let me. A SIBO I've had a while, I've done a quick video on it quite a while ago and I thought it's high time I did a full review of the SIBO G1 Professional Upright. And I've got some dogs because I'll be doing some pet hair removal tests with this. Now Daisy, she sheds a bit, but not much. Don't you? And Molly, Molly come here, Molly come here, Molly. Oh. Molly is uh, a cross between a Scotty and a Poodle, I believe, and she doesn't shed hairs at all. She has to be clipped. Molly, come on! But this week we have an extra special guest staying with the usual brood, haven't we, Daisy? We've got Lolly, who is a great big golden retriever who sheds hair like Billio. I've already picked up a couple of bagfuls of hair from her. Um, I've been harvesting her, actually, for hair, because uh, I've been using a Ferminator and getting a big bag of hair so I can keep that. It's very pale hair so it's, uh, it'll show up on camera if we use it on a darker carpet. And uh, I'll be using her hair in future demos. But um, there's plenty of her hair lying about the house that so I don't have to put any further down, do I Daisy? So without any further ado, I've got the vacuum next to me. Let's get the vacuum out. Lolly, let's, I'll just show you Lolly if I can. Lolly, come here. Lolly, oh she's asleep. Never mind, you might get to see Lolly a bit later on in the video, if you like golden retrievers. She's having a bit of a sleep. Anyway, here is the SIBO Professional G. A closer, in-depth look for you before I do my demos. Well, here it is, the SIBO Professional G1, also known as the Essential G if you're living in America. This is available in Europe, in Germany, other places, but it is not officially available in the United Kingdom, unfortunately. This is part of SIBO's commercial vacuum cleaner range and it's really based on the X series design with one major and important difference. Instead of SIBO's automatic computerized height adjustment, the Professional G1 has this manual control so you can vary the height of the cleaner head from low pile carpets, stuck down, down carpet tiles, up to higher piles, sort of medium to high, high pile, and then very high pile. So that, in my opinion, has a great advantage, having manual adjustments to the automatic version. Instead of the regular display you get on the X series, which has four lights, which includes a, um, a height up and a height down brush adjustment light. All we have here on the base is a bagful indicator or clog light and a check brush light. To access the brush, we can just press this button and the brush will come out without any tools. I'll show you that when I've got the camera on the tripod. It needs two hands, really. There's an exhaust filter here. Moving up, we have this bag door release. So you just move that up to release the bag door and the bag. I've got a new bag fitted. This is a paper bag, but SIBO have recently introduced a fabric bag for the X series uprights. This takes the same bag as, as the X series. The only difference really between the Professional G and the X series as far as spares goes is it does use a different exhaust filter. And I'll be showing you that a bit later. So that's the bag and we have the S-Class filter here. Again, it's the same one that you'd find in your X-Series models. Let's pop that bag door back on and lock it back into place. Moving on up, we've got the handle for your hose. That is your built-in stretch hose on the top of the cleaner you've got your thumb operated on off switch. Now on the back, this is a dusting brush, a, last, a large dusting brush. You don't actually get standard with this machine. You only get two cleaning tools standard, but that's SIBO's larger dusting brush, and it's a very good dusting brush. It's, uh, you can angle it in various positions. Good for your skirting boards, your shelving, your blinds, your pelmets, that sort of thing. That clips onto the machine. So that was an optional extra with this model, but you can actually buy the dusting brush with the clamp. Some clamps you can buy a front facing, which means the dusting brush will be at the front, but I think it's neater 
to have it stored on the back and this makes the machine look a bit more streamlined. So we've got, typical with SIBO, uh, 10 meters of cable, you get 10 meters of cable with their domestic uprights as well as their commercial ones. Now, because this is a German, I imported this from Germany, I've had it a few years now, this is a German plug, two pin plug. Now I do have an adapter that turns this into a three pin plug, but I'm currently using that on a Miele stick vacuum that I got from Hungary um, a couple of years ago. The demonstration for that will be following. So that's permanently attached at the moment to my Miele stick. So for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to use this little device, which enables me to plug this German plug into here. So now I can convert it to a UK three pin plug and it works fine, it's the same voltage. If you import any vacuum cleaner from Germany, it will work in the UK, providing you use some sort of adapter. You can just cut the cord and put a new plug on if you want to. But because the voltage is similar, you can use them with no problem. So you have the top, I do apologize if you can hear any racket going on in the background. Despite the fact it's dull and drizzly, the children around here think it's okay to play outside. It's half term, which I hate. So we've got some lovely little urchins playing out when they, in, you know, they should be inside on their Sony Playstations or Xboxes really. They're not normal, are they children, if they're outside playing. Anyway, so we've got the 10 meter cord with a nice hook at the top and a hook at the bottom and to release the cord all at once you go like this and then you can just lift off the cord and you're ready to clean then you can turn that back also under here is a carry handle it is a little bit small if you've got big chunky hands and sausage fingers you might have trouble getting it in but uh, it's it's all right for my dainty pinkies uh, also at the back there we have the um, extension wand. The hose is actually inside there. I'll be showing you the tool set up, of course, in the demo. The two tools you get standard with this machine are the crevice tool and SIBO normally provide a good length, it's about 30 centimeters, 12 inches of crevice tool, unlike some vacuums that just have a little short stubbly one. That's the ideal length for doing down the sides of your chairs, behind your radiators, around the side of your fridge, that sort of thing. That fits on board, like that. Oh and dear, now the neighbour's dog's barking. It's just like Piccadilly Circus around here today. And this is the onboard all-purpose nozzle slash brush. Quite a good nozzle, this. It's good for your upholstery. You can do it on your curtains, I suppose. Your stairs. It's got, um, not not a stiff, but a stiffish brush, which helps to agitate the fibres. If you've got pet hair, there's a bit of muck coming off there. Look, should have cleaned it before the video. I do apologise, but that's good to demonstrate. But if you do have lots of dog hairs, they will actually gather on the brush. But it's quite simple with your finger or your thumb just to remove it. If you're doing it when the machine's on, all that gubbins will be sucked into the the vacuum. So it does tend to gather the hairs and fibres on the brush when you're using it. But it's easy enough to clean. So that lives on board there. Next thing down we have is the handle release. Again, look, it's got a nice metal catch there, not, not a plastic catch that could easily break. These machines are built to last. They're commercial machines as well as their domestic vacuum cleaners. They are built to last. So you'd normally press that with your foot to release the handle. And I've got it on the completely floating position. There are two positions you can have this on. So when it's on floating, as you can see, I've lowered the handle and it goes completely flat to the floor and it's very good for cleaning under low furniture, the SIBOs, the X-Series uprights and the professional series because they do go very flat to the floor. Now, this is the floating position where once you've released the handle, it will go from upright to flat without any further adjustment. Now, there are times if you've got lots of rugs in your home where you'd need to lift the nozzle off um, a carpet onto a rug and you can't do it when it's in this floating position. So SIBO have provided this little orange catch lever, call it what you will. 
Now if you want there to be a stop between the operating position and the horizontal under furniture position, you just go like that. Then, when we lower the handle, it lowers into the operating position and then when you go a bit lower, as you can see, it's locked. So, for example, like I say, if you're cleaning a, a carpet and you're going onto a thicker rug, you can lift the front of the nozzle onto the rug and carry on with your cleaning. You can, of course, go under low furniture as well, even if you have it in this position. All you have to do is press, if I can reach my foot over, press with your foot again, and then you can still get under low furniture. I personally like to have it in the floating position. I find that the most convenient for my use. Right, let's just quickly show you, before I show you the underside of the vacuum, we'll lower the handle flat again, and I'll show you the exhaust filter. It's, it is bigger than the exhaust filter on the X-Series, and it's made of a different material. I haven't been able to source replacement ones of these very easily in the UK. You can get them uh, in places where this machine is available, but not, I haven't been able to get them in the UK. So, it is quite black, a bit of carbon dust there from the motor. I have actually washed this and it washed okay. It's not supposed to be washable, but because I don't have a spare one of these, I did risk washing it and it came up clean and of course, it was fine. Now it's very tricky getting it out. Oh no, there it is, there's a little debris. So there is the filter. Like I say, it is larger. The filter on the X series is more of a spongy type material. And that's, it's a larger surface area too. Now, there is a difference. Um, the new EC regulations came into effect recently and the exhaust emissions on SIBO uprights isn't too, too good on the X-Series, but if you compare the X-Series to the Professional G or the Essential G, the Professional and Essential models do better for exhaust air filtration. And I think it's probably to do with the fact it is a different filter. It's a, a more dense, it's a larger filter area and it's a more dense, denser fabric than the spongy filter. So that possibly equates to a better rating for exhaust air, because I think these ratings do take into account the motor carbon dust that is exhausted from the machine. So they may, f might filter the dirt well, the dust and dirt that you suck in, but if the exhaust air is containing some carbon dust from the motor, then that's going to lower the rating for the machine. So I believe. So anyway, in goes the filter. Let's pop it back in like that. I'll do that off camera because it's a bit fiddly doing it one-handed. I'll just uh, pop the camera on the tripod and show you the brush roll removal and the underside of the cleaner. Now the SIBO Professional G1 and the Essential G models as well as the X series uprights have a very easy to remove brush roll. Now this is great if you've got uh, long haired people or pets and you often find that the brush roller gets a lot of hair or threads around it and it needs cleaning quite frequently. With this can be, uh, it can be tricky with some vacuums. Sometimes you have to unscrew things or undo catches to take the roller out. Some you can't do at all. There are some machines that are very difficult to clean the roller. So if that's important to you, if you've got an upright cleaner and you're forever cleaning the roller and it's a bit of a chore, one of these Seba models would be one I'd recommend you looking at because it's this shape on this model, it's, it's various different uh, buttons on various SIBOs, but it's a similar principle. You just need to press this button here, and then this bit comes off, this side bearing, and then it's just a question, and again I haven't cleaned this before videoing, I don't think it'll be too bad. Oh, I say that, but it is, well it's not as bad as it could be, but this shows you the principle. We see we've got some hair, now that actually Crikey, it's, it is a long time since I've used this because I think this, this is Golden Retriever hair. So this obviously hasn't been used properly since we last had Lolly, who is the Golden Retriever, to stay. So that's, uh, when was it? Easter time this year. So anyway, this just shows you that you can just take this out, get the hairs off. If you've got loads of hairs on, I have seen some brush rollers that are absolutely caked in hair. You put, might need some scissors to cut through initially, but there's not a lot on here, so I can just pull it off. 
Sometimes I like to give the brushes a clean as well. They do get dirty, your vacuum cleaner brushes, because they're going over carpet. And unless you're, unless you're shampooing your carpet on a regular basis, they will pick up some dirt. So that there is some dirt on these. I do sometimes, when I'm giving the machine a good clean, I do clean this. I try not to get any moisture in the bearing sides. But just a bit of washing up liquid, wet it slightly, go up and down like this, foam it up, rinse it, again trying to keep any water out of the ends, give it a bit of a shake, thoroughly dry it. Sometimes I put a little bit of oil on the bearings on either side and then I slot it back in. It's something you need to do from time to time if you want your cleaner to operate efficiently. So it's a very good brush roll on the SIBO uprights. It's a good stiff brush roll. Um, pretty aggressive, pretty good at pet hair. If you've got delicate carpets and rugs, SIBO do a soft version of this that is more suitable, say, for wool carpets, but it will tend to wear out quicker than the nylon version. So once you've got it cleaned like that, make sure you put it in the right way. This way is the way you want it to be facing out, outwards with the spindle. So you want to put it into the machine with this part first. So again for this I don't even have to turn the machine over. I can do it all with the machine in this position. So I can just slide the brush in, give it a bit of a turn until it's flush with the body there and then I need to pop the end cap back on and that's it, that's simple brush maintenance. I'll just turn the machine round and I'll just show you the underside before we get to the demos. Right, so this is the underside of the cleaning head. You just have at the front one single central wheel. Now that's the wheel that moves up and down according to the height setting you've selected on the dial. So on the automatic X versions, this is an automatic wheel. There's a little servo motor and a computer on board that automatically adjusts the height of the wheel according to the type of carpet you're cleaning and also adjusts for brush roll wear. I personally prefer the manual setting. Some people like the automatic setting. I find that the manual cleaner, because you can control the height of the brush, you can go deeper than possibly the computer would allow you to. So it does tend to, I think, clean better. So you can turn the dial here, which adjusts the brush, but it needs to be on the floor. There we are, if I press it down, you can see how it goes lower and varies in height just slightly according to the setting you have on the dial. The other thing to look at here is this little trap door in orange. You can open that up and it gives you some limited access. It's not a huge opening here. But if you find you've got a blockage, you can actually get some access into the air path through here. Also, if there is a blockage, you can easily, of course, remove the brush roll so you've got more access into the front of the nozzle. So if it's blocked between here and here, it's pretty easy to unblock. And you've got two wheels at the back. Nice, smooth running. Everything about this machine its boring, yes. It looks boring. It's dull. It's in a battleship grey colour. It's not exciting to look at, but it is well put together. It is, it's a solid, solid vacuum cleaner. So these wheels, very, very smooth running. And all the wheels have this little rubberized tyre or coating or runner, whatever you call it. So it helps on hard surfaces, although I, Personally, wouldn't really use this on hard floors. You can do, but for me, an upright with a revolving brush and a hard floor don't mix. But in a commercial situation, when the hard flooring is pretty robust, in general, it's commercial grade flooring, as long as you use the correct setting on the machine, it should be okay to use for hard floors. But there we go. That's the base of the SIBO. Right, you've seen everything I need to show you about the machine itself. Let's plug this cleaner in and get some dirt picked up. Hello, well I've come into the kitchen with Lolly here, the golden retriever. She's not ours, she's just here for the week. But I've been harvesting a lot of hair from this dog because she sheds hair like nobody's business, don't you lols? Yes, well she does. And just in front of me, out of camera shot, 
is our entrance mat, which is a grey colour, which does show off Lolly's very pale hair far better than the carpets in the rest of the house, which are sort of a harvest beige colour. So fortunately her hair doesn't show up on the majority of the carpets in the home, but believe you me, there's a lot of it. When she's gone, in a week's time, I'll be still finding your hair for months after, it gets everywhere. So anyway, what I've done with some of Lolly's hair that I harvested earlier, I've covered the entrance mat. Oh, you, you're bored. Are you going? I've covered the entrance mat. Oh, you let off. Oh, thank you for that. I've covered the entrance mat with her hair. So we're going to use the Sebo Professional G1. Oof, Lolly. Dirty. Right. Oh, that was the right one. No, don't come back. You, yeah, you dealt it, and you come. Oh. Right, sorry about that. Anyway, Lolly, let's clean up your hair. Well, now Lolly and her windy bottom has been removed to the living room. We will test the pet hair pickup of the Sibo Professional G1. Now, as you can see, this is an extreme example. If any of your carpets have this much hair on them, I suggest you seek professional help. But in order to give you a full visual demonstration of how well the SIBO picks up pet hair, it is best to put loads down. So I'm going to go forward and back through the middle of this mess with the SIBO and we'll analyse the results. As you can see, one forward and one backwards pass through the middle of this very difficult to remove pet hair has proved that it isn't quite so difficult to remove after all if you have the right equipment to do it. And obviously the SIBO, there are many other vacuums available that can deal with pet hair, this SIBO has proved that it is more than a match for even the worst pet hair mess you can see a definite clean path through the middle of that doormat. Exceptional pet hair removal with that machine. Right, before I test the dirt removal on the hard floor, I'm going to clean up the rest of this pet hair. deal with the mess on the floor, some of which you can already see. If I turn the camera slightly you'll be able to see the full horror of the mess I've thrown on the kitchen floor for the SIBO to cope with, hopefully. We need to adjust the height setting suitable for floors. Now SIBO say this machine is suitable for hard floors, but the brush roll will still rotate. It's a single motored vacuum cleaner, unlike some cleaners where you can switch the brush roll off. You can't with this machine. Now I, I've done a test of this beforehand mainly because I forgot to turn the camera on so I do know what this is going to result in. I do know the results and um, I can tell you now, a little bit of a spoiler, this will scatter a lot of dirt behind it because unlike the X-Series models that I've had in the past there isn't a little squeegee strip behind the brush roll. Now that's there to help create a seal on a hard floor. It also helps prevent dust and dirt from being scattered behind the machine as you move the machine forward. Because this machine lacks that, it does scatter an absolute ton of dirt behind it and we'll capture that in the video in a moment. 
So when I did it on this floor for my original test run, I used setting 2 on the height control. At the moment it's on setting 4. Now if I try and use the machine on setting 4, after a few seconds the check brush light at the bottom will illuminate to tell me that the height setting is wrong. So I need to lower the height. So if I show you, it's now on setting 4 which is really too high so the brush isn't actually touching the floor. When the machine's thought about it, this light should illuminate. So there you go, it took a while, but it did eventually. So I do know that setting 2, setting 1 seems to be a bit low, but setting 2 for this particular hard floor is one I find the most effective. So let's line up the machine and pass it forward and back through the line of muck that I've produced. Now on this floor I've put down the usual sort of things you might find spilt on a kitchen floor. There's some flour, some rolled oats, some more of Lolly's hair, some couscous, some sugar and some rice. Now I do apologise, um, the rice is from Morrison's uh, I, I don't know how it got in the cupboard, I think my partner must have done some shopping. I tried to use Waitrose rice, but I'm sorry, it's Morrison's rice for you, but, you know, it'll still perform the same, I expect, in the demonstration. Other rices are available. So, anyway, here's all the muck. Is it going to work? Now, I suggest you look towards the back of the machine, because I think you'll see quite a lot being spewed out at the back, which is the one main failing of this vacuum on hard floors. Here we go then. I couldn't see my viewfinder very clearly while I was doing that, but um, I think you probably saw quite a lot of this mess being absolutely catapulted back. And in fact, it's being catapulted back quite far. It's right to the end of the room, right under the table. But the path it's cleaned is fine. Looks great, but it's more or less just... Obviously the fine particles, the flour and the smaller particles, it has actually sucked up. It's mainly the large particles I can see behind me, mainly the rolled oats and the rice that has not actually been picked up by this machine. So really, it's a fail on hard floors, although SIBO say it is suitable for hard floors. If you've got a lot of mess of larger particles, especially to clean up, it's not so good. You can, of course, take the hose off, the onboard hose and tube, and fit a brush to the end. You can get another extension tube if you wish, and you can fit a floor and wall brush or another hard floor brush. That will give far better results. So unfortunately, the SIBO Professional G1 doesn't fare so well on hard floors. Well, you find me in the living room, stood behind the SIBO Professional G1, and in front of me is an absolute load of mess taken from my bag of filth. This is weeks worth of dirt that has been removed from various carpets, not just mine. But this mixture contains different types of pet hair, there's dust, there's everything I've thrown onto the floor in various demos. So there's couscous, there's sugar, there's flour, there's rolled oats, there's bits of paper. I've even spotted the odd toenail clipping. So everything that you may find on a carpet has been dramatically thrown all over this lovely clean beige colour carpet. Will the SIBO Professional G1 be up to the job? Well, I'm pretty sure it will be, otherwise I would have thrown this mess down. Anyway, we're going to do the usual, straight forward and then one pass back through the middle and we'll have a look at the clean path, hopefully a clean path that the SIBO will provide for us. Okay then, fingers crossed, let's go. Now then, I'm 
not quite sure that the camera can pick this up. Can you tell where I've been? Let's have a look at the viewfinder. Mm. I'm not sure, can you tell? Of course. <laughs> of course we can tell. Look at that. There's not many cleaners that produce such a fantastic result as that. Some have come close, but SIBO, you know, if you look back at my videos, I've done other reviews on SIBO machines, the Felix and the um, D series, the D4 Premium, and they both, both of those machines have produced a similar cleaning result to this Professional G, where we've got a completely clean path through this extreme example of dirt. I mean, look at that. That is absolutely fantastic, and no line of shame. The path that it's cleaned, there's no track lines. Some machines that have those bars on the, if you look underneath your upright vacuum cleaner, if you've got a lot of bars across it, you might find that it leaves little lines all over the carpet, and a lot of people don't like that. But you do not get that with a SIBO. Certainly not with this SIBO, anyway. That is absolutely fantastic cleaning results. Anyway, I'm going to clean the rest of this up, and then we'll see how the SIBO copes with doing above floor jobs like the stairs and upholstery. Cleaning above the floor, the SIBO has an onboard hose and wand set up, so if you see a bit of dirt that you can't quite reach with the main cleaner when you're going around something in the corner, you can just whip the tube off and do all your cleaning that way. So it's got the onboard tube, it's got quite a nice comfortable handle there, but quite a short hose, so there's no way this will clean up a standard flight of stairs. Not with the supplied hose, it will with the extension hose that you can buy as an optional extra. It does actually come with certain models of SIBO X series uprights, I uh, believe the X4 Extra and possibly the PET series in the UK does come with an extension hose. But for general cleaning of your upholstery and if you just need to reach that cobweb up in the corner, normally this will suffice. So onto the end of the tube, you can attach one of the two nozzles that come as standard. As I showed you earlier in the video, I have got the onboard dusting tool, which I bought as an option. But the two attachments you get standard are the crevice tool and the all-purpose nozzle. So I can fit the crevice tool direct onto the end of the tube. So as I say, as I'm going, I can just whip up high, or if I see that little dust bunny in the corner, grab the hose and I can just pick it up like that. One thing, one criticism, main criticism of this type of cleaner, uh, many people have said it in the reviews, is of course because the hose comes out of the top of the machine it will easily topple over. Two ways around that, one way is you can buy the extension hose and then you've got a lot more leeway and in fact you can actually lay the machine down when you're using the extension hose if you lie the machine on the floor as long as you haven't got any pets or children that could be attracted by the rotating agitator, then that will prevent it from toppling because you've already got it in a horizontal position. The other option is to actually hold the machine. So this does limit your area of cleaning because you do have to hold the handle with one hand while you're directing 
the tube with another, but that's fine just for doing your upholstery, you can steady the machine, and like I say, doing the old nooks and crannies, it's all right for that. Bear in mind, this is um, a commercial machine, and it will mainly be used on carpets, but it is useful to have a wand attached, so if whoever's using the machine spots an area of dirt they can't get into, they can quickly grab the tube, whiz up the dirt. You don't even have to have an nozzle on. It is shaped at the end in such a way that you can just use basically the end of the tube just to whiz round. And when people are cleaning in a commercial environment, they're not too concerned about doing a really thorough job as long as it looks clean. I'm not uh, saying anything against professional cleaners. Some obviously have do a better job than others, but obviously it's a time constraint. They need to get in, get cleaned and get out so you know the office can continue working or whatever, whatever they're doing. So it's all about speed. So it's fine for that, but for detailed cleaning, these uprights aren't very good. With the hose, which I'll show you, the extension hose, does make it a bit more versatile. So that's the onboard wand. I'm going to show you how I can clean stairs with this machine. Now what you can do, the design is such that you use this while it's running, or not in shot, that's probably an advantage. When you actually put the tube back into the machine, in theory, the hose should actually retract back into the tube automatically. Before I do that, I'll just show you another thing you can do. On the wand here, just below the handle, there's a little button. You can press that in, and you can remove the hose like that. So, you can now connect any of the tools directly to the hose end if you need just a little bit more flexibility. If you're in a tighter space, you can use it like that as well. So when you're cleaning, and you've spotted a bit of dirt, and you've got rid of it using the hose and wand setup. When you pop the hose, as long as the wand is back in the machine correctly and it's engaged, there is a little lip on the top of the bag door compartment, of the bag compartment. Let me show you. There, there's a little lip. As long as this part here is securely engaged in that lip, then the hose should retract back into the tube. At the moment, because I've had it in the out position, it's actually locked. It's locked open, which makes it good for using, you know, otherwise it'd be retracting all the time when you block the end off. But as soon as we put it in the machine, with the machine running, a little catch disengages, and hopefully this tube should be sucked back neatly into there. Well here I am at the foot of my stairs with not a cat in hell's chance of reaching anywhere near the top with this supplied tube and a very short hose. But in the interest of science I will see how many stairs I can easily clean using the SIBO at the bottom using the supplied hose. Okay here goes. Well obviously step one is fine. Even two stairs. Three stairs, yes. Even four stairs I can clean. Now, here is where it's starting to get a bit tricky, but we'll persevere. Five stairs, yes, I can clean five stairs easily using this machine. Now, what about six? Now, the machine has tilted back, but yes, I can clean six. I don't think, well, at a push, Yes, at a push, with the machine safely at the bottom of the stairs, I can clean seven steps, but that's not very good, is it? Unless you live in a very squat, short house, you will have more than seven stairs to clean. Or if you live in a bungalow, you're fine, aren't you? But if you live in a, a, a house with not just one, but two flights of stairs, like my house has, you will need a vacuum cleaner that will clean right up the stairs, or purchase a handheld vacuum. Anyway, for a smallish outlay, I'm not quite sure how much now these cost, possibly 30 pounds, so probably that's not quite so small, but you can extend the hose with this great big long thing. So we'll see, it is stretchable, but not quite as stretchable as some hoses, or some onboard hoses on vacuums do stretch a lot more than that, but the hose itself is pretty long anyway, 
so it is still going to stretch further than that. So, in order to attach the hose, I did it without showing you, didn't I? But, I showed you earlier in the video, I need to remove the wand by pressing the button. Then you attach the darker grey end, this rubbery end, to this. Just push and twist. It's a friction fit. And now I've got a really long one. Now I can direct, directly put, if I want to, I can directly put the small nozzle onto the end of the extension hose like that. Or I can put the extension hose into the wand. So now that's locked into the wand and I can put the nozzle on the end of the wand like that. So now let's see how far I can reach up the stairs using Sibo's extension hose. Okay then, I have a feeling I'll be able to go all the way, but I'm not sure. This is a standard flight of stairs. Standard flight of stairs in the UK is about 12 or 13 steps. So hopefully I should be able to reach right to the top using the Sibo. So here goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm on the ninth and tenth stair. Here is the hose. I can successfully clean. Now the machine might topple back, but I can actually reach quite easily right to the top. Now I've got the extension hose. So, if you are considering this machine or a similar SIBO machine like the X-Series and it doesn't have the extension hose as standard and you want to clean your stairs, then really the extension hose is an essential purchase. Unless, of course, you have a separate cylinder vacuum or handheld cleaner that you use to clean your stairs with. Well, that about brings us to the end of my review for the SIBO Professional G1 Upright Vacuum Cleaner or the Essential G as it's known in the USA and possibly Canada as well. It might be known as that in Australia, I'm not sure, but anyway. Professional G or Essential G, it's a very good cleaner, but there are things that aren't so good about it. Hard floor cleaning, as you saw on the video, it did scatter a lot of dirt behind the cleaning head. So for picking up larger particles on a hard floor, it's not very good. Also, the tool setup, it's okay, but it's a bit inconvenient and the machine will topple over if you're not supporting it while you're using the cleaning tools. As far as carpet cleaning ability goes though, it is fantastic. I'll give it five out of five, especially picking up pet hair, but any mess, as you saw earlier in the video, it left a completely clean path through an awful lot of mess I put down on the carpet. So if your main cleaning concern is wall-to-wall -wall carpets and you've got dogs, then go for it. This would be an ideal machine to use in conjunction, really, with a cylinder vacuum. So if you can afford two machines, if you've got space to store two machines, use this cleaner for your day-to-day -day carpet cleaning and use a cylinder machine for your hard floors and your above floor cleaning. It is very well built, as all SIBOs are. It's robust. Boring, I know. It's a bit boring to look at. It would be nice if SIBO could inject some colour, but it does what it says on the tin. It's a vacuum cleaner, and it is. It's tough as old boots. It is well made. It's not too noisy. It just feels quality. I do like it. I like SIBO vacuum cleaners. They are very good. They're still made in Germany. They are very well built. And when you compare a SIBO vacuum cleaner to some machine made in China, you will see that they are poles apart in terms of build quality. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video. hope it's uh, filled you in on anything you needed to know about this machine. Stay tuned because I do have more uploads in the pipeline, more unboxing videos, more reviews, more adverts, more home shopping channel do briefings, you know, whatever. I've got lots, still, still lots to put on my channel, so if you want to be updated as soon as I upload a new video, please subscribe and you'll get a little message in your inbox telling you to have a look. So, for me, and from little Daisy, and from Molly, and from Lolly, 
right over there who provided me with a lot of the hair for this demo. It's goodbye and I'll see you soon.